What's going on everyone? My name is Skiz. Welcome back to yet another episode of our graffiti freight train watching series. The series where we take a look at these sort of moving art galleries that have this, this gorgeous graffiti and artwork. We take a look at the tags, the throws, the pieces, the whole nine yards of it, and uh, get inspired a little bit by it. Take a look and see what's going on in graffiti communities across the continent, really, where these freights have been. And of course, if you do want your own tags, throws, and pieces, tea, you can get that in a plethora of colors. It'll be the first link in the description. So we'll get right into it. These first a couple sort of pieces are a good indication of what's to come. As as usual, I took like a bit of time ahead to just come and check the pieces out to see what we're dealing with so I can uh, talk about them a little bit as well. And really today, like the last episode was an episode where there was a lot of very good structurally sound concepts being applied to pieces. This one is more, you're going to see a lot of pieces that have a lot of great color schemes going on. So that's something you can focus on or that we can focus on. Yeah, again, it's it's hard to deal with the big patches that get buffed out here that really do ruin the pieces. Like, they don't cover them, but they ruin them. And that's obviously really irritating. And you know what? Like, how criminal is it? 2008, and and these people have, have ruined it. Like... People are the worst, you know. We got a great piece here from Soper, though. Looks like it was a quick one. This piece is the kind that I picture pieces like this being like, like they have that very, I used one cap for the whole piece type look to them. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm certainly not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it reminds you of like doing quick pieces and that kind of thing. We got Freight Bandit up there. As I said last episode as well, sometimes I try and pick like a topic to talk about throughout these episodes, but this is another episode where it's gonna be packed with freights, like there's not many bare ones. Uh, it'll be really interesting to take a look at how some of these older ones are faring as well. We have Cassette, speaking of things that are old. <laughs> Loser Lee up there. Hindu an interesting tag. GTB. So we have a uh, Soper and, uh, you know, Moist DEK, but one thing I actually want to quickly mention about specifically these, I hadn't actually tried the Markles that are like the, the uh, chrome or the metallic ones until like maybe a year or two ago. And they're like honestly much smoother than normal Markles, like significantly smoother on, on metal surfaces, especially when it's nice and, and heated up, of course. But the metallic Markles are actually some of my favorites nowadays to use, although I, I'm not a fan of paying more for them. If you get them in like packs on Amazon that are really cheap, you can get them for like a buck each. I'll even link that, the, like a pack that's cheap down below. This piece is super awesome though. Of course, I, I was realizing I was giving you guys like very far away shots in the last episode. So I want to give you more like full, not exactly close up, but just better shots than last episode. Sipo. Bucky, Howie, got pop quiz again with 2009 there, Grease, it's always really nice to see freights that have clearly been like crushed for like ever, like these ones are obviously older, they've got a lot of old pieces on them, but they've also got a lot of new stuff on them as well, and it's great to see that mix, you know? That contrast between some of the older stuff and the newer stuff really gives you an interesting blast from the past, almost, you could say. Very interesting, sort of like, bulging 
style. Really a fan of that. Obviously, you know, nothing looks as good when it's been semi-buffed like this, and it's just so frustrating, but it's the name of the game, right? But my point was gonna be the blue background. You'd notice it much more making the piece pop if that stuff wasn't there. Almost any semi-vibrant color is a really great choice for but when you're doing a chrome and black type thing. This piece is a great example of flow within a piece. You've got this, this sort of uniformity between the top bars of the three middle letters there. All sandwiched in between the R and the K. I'm sorry, I'm trying to point to stuff again on screen, which is hard. So we have a snow piece here. It's got the seventh letter symbol on it. A lot of stuff does nowadays. I don't, I'm not so sure if that means anything now. As I say, I always try and give you guys a good look at not just the pieces, but the little monikers, the tags. It's all important as I'm continuously preaching. <laughs> I'm staring like directly into the sun, uh, just so you guys are aware, so hopefully you guys can see this stuff better. Good to see some mops being used here, especially in such a unique color, you know, you don't see like orange mops too often, not that they're any less common um, to get your hands on, they're just not commonly used, I think. So we got value here, a fitting name for a piece with such a good color scheme, just beautiful. Got a dog barking at me. To be fair, I am like in people's backyards almost right here, but. style like that that's just very plain well, it's almost straight letter especially on freights because that stuff is super powerful on freights this next one here is one of the best things you'll see today this ever everything on this car actually is but this is a crispo piece and he's got a crisp style and he seems to know it he or she i should say you know just just the detail and the way they've kept this structurally sound is really, really brilliant. I really like how they've made a, an element go down here and an element go down on the other side. They don't really fit into any of the letters and that usually bothers me because I do like sort of those extra elements that that promote the the shape of the piece to actually come from somewhere organic but this is it's just so well done and it's so clean it's hard to have a problem with anything that clean of course and that well done. Along those same lines, we got a pike piece here, I believe. Um, and again, it's like I said, the, the colors are, is really what does it for me on a lot of these pieces, the colors and the cleanliness. They're just so well executed. And it's a funny thing because like people who don't write or don't even write that often probably can't appreciate enough the differences between something that's really well structured and, and clean and something that's not. but you really should, because it's just hard to pull that off. Just want to get a full shot of this. Something else that's really disappointingly cut off is this. It was something E-C-O-R, just the, the 3D, the whole directionality of it. It was great. Still is, but you know, it's cut off and sad now. <laughs> this might be a tag by the same guy. We got HNR, very clear, it's 2019, so new enough stuff. We got all Alto and Hulk, H-O-L-K. Of course, gotta get some shots of this for the drip heads, you know. I love this little character. That's awesome. I can't figure out what it reminds me of. It reminds me of something in some movie or something. Ruse. Here's a bit of a bigger production, in terms of physical size, I mean. Yeah, just simple stuff like that, like the leaves, that adds a bit of an accent when you're using a, a color scheme, but also, it's like I said last time, it, it just brings the piece up a notch, I think. 
I feel like more pieces on this side of this uh, line of freights got really busted by just some shitty buffs. Gotta say, that cheek tag is dope. I'm trying to keep this episode a little bit faster paced because of how long the last one was. Um, it's funny because in that last episode, I mentioned how, how the freight watching series is a bit of an easier one for me to like edit and get out to you guys, but then that one is so long that like right now I'm editing it and it's taking forever. It's just the worst. CFO? Who knows, maybe that guy is a CFO at a company or something. That would be cool. If I was a CFO, I'd still do graffiti. So this is um, one of the more complex color schemes that you'll see here by PESS, but it really does work. And the black is a great way to accent this. You can definitely keep the black very high on that, on the P and on the S, and it's throughout the E, which is in the middle. And sort of those more benign purples, very interesting. We have something a little bit unique here. It's not often you see pieces that don't just go to the bottom of the freight. And you know, the, the space near the bottom is so valuable because of having to bring stuff to get up higher. So it's an interesting choice to keep the bottom of the freight clean in this case. But left room for some tags. Maybe the tags were there before the piece. I don't know, G-Man and Shore got in there though. Beer snob, lol. You can tell a lot about a writer by what they write. Like someone who writes beer snob obviously isn't gonna be the type of writer you would think that takes themselves too seriously, <laughs> which is great. Cause I, I think there, there shouldn't be any room for that in graph. This is a nice two-tone thing. That's awesome. Wow. If the E wasn't buffed out, it would be awesome. Or just saying, Aster tag up there, nice. But yeah, just it's nice to see that some writers don't take themselves too seriously because there's so much ego within so many different graffiti communities and it's just, it gets old so fast. Nobody wants to deal with it. I just wish that aspect of graph would go away. Like, but something that I wish I could keep and that wouldn't go away is this value piece. Incredible. A nice cursive style. Can't execute anything better than that. Creative spaces, that might be their crew. They have a cool little bottle there. Y and Z. Yeah, that's sad. <sighs> this was some really good stuff. It still is, I'm not saying anything to the contrary. It's just such big squares. That's another lesson that writers should learn sooner rather than later. Just tape over the letters and remove it afterward. It's also about like preserving your own work and they're not gonna buff huge portions of it out. If you just tape it over, and then uncover it afterward. Like that's all it takes, that is really all it takes. And when you consider doing that for like, say 10 years into your graffiti career, if you've done freight semi-regularly for that whole time, that's 10 years worth of pieces that would have been buffed out at least in a significant portion that you're saving. So like you tell me if it's worth it. I hope most of you understand that yes, yes it is worth it. And it really doesn't take that much extra time to just tape the stuff up. You don't even have to do a good job of it because like as long as they can read it, they don't really care. Hair. Like for example, like there is technically paint on this, but you can read it and they haven't buffed out huge portions of it, so. So we got a Glover piece here, I believe. Again, the GLO all tilted towards the left slightly. Really does wonders for that uniformity. Something else you guys are gonna really like is this next car, both the pieces on it. Uh, yeah, what can I even say? Noter. It looks like there's a sort of cool little character almost in the O. Yeah, I 
actually I don't know if that's right. It's not noter, is it? So we got pest here. That might have been the last one that was PES, especially because you can tell from the fill it's the same guy for sure, trying some fancy stuff out with the color scheme, but I guess the T didn't get buffed out this time. Really enjoying this more like, I'm trying to figure out what kind of art it resembles a little bit or what kind it reminds me of, because there's a name for it. I'm not gonna remember it. We got Globe up there. Good to see some stuff by Globe. Nice little Markle throwy. I'm a big fan of the Markle throwies. They're easy and fun. We got some sort of correction pen there that that was done with. Some older stuff. Um, actually on the other side of this freight, we did see this pattern here. It's on both. So someone went over this, which I mean, at least they tried to like do a piece over it, except the stuff that was under it was better judging from the other side i'll put i'll try and put a screenshot on screen of what's on the other side that is using that pattern and you'll see it's much better moral of the story if you can't burn it don't cover it up that's been a rule for as long as i've been alive it's sort of been a rule since like the beginning of time anyway so <laughs> not just since i've been alive dallas texas though i cannot tell you how far i am from dallas texas so it's always just sort of mind-boggling to see the reach of a lot of these freights, and it's it's really nice to, to see. Got a massive piece here. Super clean as well. Wow. S-U-E-M-E. -E. I know I've said this before, I'm never a big fan of doing two different kinds of E's in the same piece, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not hating on it. So these might have been the guys on the other side of the freight that also got interrupted and had to take off. Moist and somebody else there that I'm not stopping for. We got sleep here, I believe. Something else I should say is if I do read some stuff wrong, it's because I'm trying to go fast here. Like, it's not because I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're welcome to think that, but it's a beautiful mega piece. This is one of my favorites of this line, actually. Dope piece mega. We got Chave here with a sort of, um, Again, a color scheme that you can't argue with, the blue and the pink. We got blah up there, and again, agile. That agile tag, very sharp, and dawns. So this is almost the same character as we saw last episode. Probably done by the same guy. We've, I think we figured out it was either a horse or maybe a uh, Mario or something like that. Here's. DTM 12. It's funny how well a lot of like the correction fluids hold up. Like that's what happens when you have a very nice highly pigmented solvent ink or paint. The solvents do wonders for for paints and inks. It's it's incredible. So this arsenic piece, you know, it's the type of thing where they did the areas fast that <laughs> they understood they could do fast. For example, like if I get close enough, I don't know how, how like it's easier to see in person, but I, it's not like the white filling is super clean or the like the white 3D, I mean. The filling itself is much cleaner and you you can tell that they they know what they're doing because the actual outline is, is clean as hell. So <laughs> it's just choosing what you're gonna spend more time on, which is an important, time management i know it sounds funny but because <laughs> this isn't where you usually hear the words time management but time management is very important when you're doing this kind of thing for obvious reasons it's just not something you hear too often wow look a little unicorn sees them i love that RXS crew. We got another CFO piece, I believe, here. Not a huge fan of how that C is 
happening. It's the pieces of the actual letter are about the same size as like the tails of it, which sort of breaks down the clarity of the letter a little bit. Again, not, not hating, I'm just saying. <laughs> We got vapor. Yeah, again, awesome. Unfortunately, I don't, I think these light ones don't show up super well on camera, which is unfortunate because like in person, you can see this very well. Whereas on camera, it sort of all blends together and you can't really pick out how, just how detailed it is. Like, you know, these little pieces, the background, the yellow works really nice. So that's actually a super visible piece, like even from way back. So those are the last freights. I tried to do this episode a little bit quicker. I don't think I managed to. <laughs> As always, this is just one of many of the freight watching series that we have on the channel. It's one of the many series on the channel. You can go check out some of the other series as well. But even a lot of the people who are asking me to make more of these, I don't think they've seen all of them. So I'll link the first, a playlist of the first 10 episodes of the Graffiti Freight Train watching series on screen at the end of the video. Also, you can check out some of the other series on the channel we do lots of reviews i show some of my work as well and we we do tons of different stuff really all related of course to this beautiful art that we all love so i would highly recommend that you check out the ones on screen if you do want your very own tags throws and pieces shirt that'll be the first link in the description so i hope i'll see you in another one of my videos very soon on screen until then peace <laughs>